Uh, hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here, and welcome back to another crypto video. And my question of today is what's the crypto to watch for 2021? So put down below in the comment section what your favorite crypto is for 2021. And as of this point, mine, of course, is XRP, but I hold a ton of cryptos like I've told y'all. So just put down below what your favorite one is. And we are giving away 250 XRP the first time that a video hits 1500 likes within 24 hours. So make sure you press the like button, make sure you are subscribed and make sure you comment something down below. Have said that guys, let's move on. Why a massive 169 <laughs> year old insurance company just bought $100 million in Bitcoin. Mass Mutual becomes the latest announced institutional buyer of Bitcoin, and this one could be even more significant in terms of president. I, I still don't know how to pronounce this one. Again, I'm not a native English speaker. I try my best. Precedent? I don't know. I'm not going to figure it out either, but comment down below what I should have said it as, because you guys always correct me down there, so quickly go ahead and do that. So our main discussion is why Mass Mutual bought $100 million in Bitcoin and why it matters. Well, to me, it actually doesn't necessarily matter what crypto they purchased. In this case, it is Bitcoin. And I mean, it could have been Ethereum, it could have been XRP, it could have been whatever. I don't think it really matters. It matters that they got into crypto and with what strategy or idea they got into it. In this episode, at least we didn't watch the episode, but it's about the, the, the text below. NLW looks at recent news that Mass Mutual has purchased $100 million in Bitcoin for its general account, as well as made a $5 million minority investment in the $2.3 billion asset manager, NYDIG, which helped facilitate the Bitcoin purchase. I believe uh, Ripple founder Chris Larson is also involved with this, by the way. I believe so. Don't quote me, but I, I'm like 90, 95% sure. He discusses why insurance company purchases are different than other institutional buyers like MicroStrategy and why this might be the beginning of a more significant industry trend. So, in my opinion, I believe every single company that's purchasing Bitcoin or crypto is very, very important, right? And the, the main reason I've, I've been quoting that for a very long while is because we need to get this happening. We need the ball to start rolling for other companies to join on in and other companies and other companies. And well, I think MicroStrategy started a pretty good role. And some of the guys we've talked about in the last couple of days, all these billionaires who now finally start to get in, they're doing quite a lot of groundwork for crypto, right? They're doing a lot of groundwork in the sense that we need these a little bit lesser known companies to kind of say, hey, we give the seal of approval. Hey, we want this. Hey, we're going to go for this before others will roll in logically. And the more of these companies, especially in different directions that we get going in, will ultimately, again, that's what we really want, uh, change their Bitcoin as well to other cryptos like XRP. But most importantly, they get into crypto. That first little piece of contact, though, is the most important. And if I, for example, were majority stakeholder in a company where everybody on the board is like, okay, you know what? Let's invest in crypto. We want that. And I'm like, okay, I don't really want to. But they're like, well, with this company, that company, this company, they've all done it. They've all had their reserves in crypto, for example. I would be like, okay, let me check it out. And then I were to check it out and see the returns on their Bitcoin investments, which in general are all very, very bullish. I couldn't really stop it then, right? I couldn't really be like, nah, let's not do that because what can I say? The only thing I could ever say is it's too risky, but they were like, well, I mean, all these companies are doing it. So if we fail, all these companies will fail too, right? And do you think that's going to happen? No, they most likely have better analysts than we do. Us as a, for example, $5 million company and them as a freaking $15 billion company. Yeah, so uh, I, I kind of convinced myself all these companies are hoarding it now. They know what's coming and they all need just one little piece of contact. They only need one reference to to hop on in this. But piece by piece, there's more getting out there, right? So the quicker it will go as well. And the same thing happens for XRP eventually, where right now they're just buying Bitcoin. But the same kind of theory applies to any Bitcoin bull run. It's Bitcoin first, all coins later. People buy Bitcoin because it's the most known and the best store of value. And after a while, they're in profit, right? So they sell that Bitcoin either to US dollar, which they don't really do because they got into Bitcoin for kind of escaping the US dollar. And they sell it to some other crypto, which they can then make more profit with. Or once they ride the Bitcoin wave, they know, hey, you know, this crypto stuff is something for me. What else can I invest some of my money in now that I've already made money with crypto? And then they go for, again, something like XRP, which has real utility, real use case, and is going to be big, in my opinion. 
This article here said Fidelity Digital Assets dives into why institutions are adding Bitcoin to their treasury reserves. Once more, I don't think you really need to understand why, uh, unless you really have no idea about the current situation of, of politics. For example, there's already just three things you can just think off straight at the bat. I, I didn't look here. Just eyes closed right now and think about something. First of all, the government is not as trusted as it was before. Second of all, in that same sense, but a, a little bit different, this is new uh, this is new in the sense that China and the U.S. are having this battle and the U.S. dollar is not as trusted in the sense that it's not the priority anymore. And, you know, that together is point two, maybe even still point one. It doesn't really matter. Point three is it's some newer technology. It's, it's really crazy and a lot of profit can be made. And four is a lot of others are doing it. They're putting their money into an asset which can go 100 times or so. And investing only 1% can double all your assets eventually if it goes times 100 again which is kind of what a lot of these companies want to go for as well, and which is why they don't go for maximum exposure, but just some, because the returns could be insane. But yeah, that's just something I'm thinking about. Inflation strikes, logically as well. Damaged financials, cash flows, and profitability, not that important. It's mostly about this one down below here, inflation. They're afraid of that, and they want to kind of counter against it. And some are too afraid to even do that, but I think another part of it all is that huge companies are buying in, which was our point number four, I think. Then, by the way, if you're watching this video, and you're going to have Christmas dinner or something like that with your family, and you're not persuading them to buy some crypto, well, you most likely have a good reason. Because, uh, guys, <laughs> I, have a, I have a very fun story for y'all, right? I was having this discussion with somebody that I know about cryptocurrency, and logically, they always tell me that they know everything about it, right? And I never tell them that I'm Dusty BC or that I hold crypto. I just always listen. I like to observe them. He was going on on a rant and just saying, man, I own this cryptocurrency. It is amazing. Look at this. Look at the prospects. Look at everything. And he came at me with like some 2,000th place coin. He's like, yeah, man, I, I had some, some Bitcoin before. I only had like $50 worth, but I, you know, I, I've really done my research now. And that was actually like a month ago or so. And the coin right now is defunct. I've never seen it anymore. I don't even know the name, but it was very, really stupid. And the point is of that story there will be a lot of people who are going to tell you to buy some certain crypto and some other, and 95% of them won't know what they're talking about. And 95% of them, again, will just say this because they know it from somebody else who's, who told them it's good or something like that. But a lot of the guys over at the Christmas table, they don't really know that much about crypto. All right, you watching these videos, there's a good chance, unless they're watching these videos too, that they don't know that much or at least that you know more than them. So I'm not taking advice on crypto from anybody at the Christmas table. Not doing that. I, I've tried it before. Another fun example was me at the gym. I think it's already been three years ago now during the bull run. There were these guys all in the gym pushing one specific Dutch coin that was. And again, right now it's non-existent anymore. Nobody's talking about it. It's completely gone. Maybe it's like in the 4,000th place. I don't even know. It just it doesn't work. And the same thing for a lot of these ICOs back in the day. People used to really, really heavily promote it and then they were all kind of gone piece by piece. And the thing is, it's, it's, again, it, it kind of depends on what people they're telling me, right? Because this thing we talked about before, this GSX, this was not me who found this, right? You guys kept saying in the comment section, check out Apollo. And you guys have done that years before, but I never really listened. Uh, and now they came up with something new, GSX Gold Secured Currency. It's basically a stable coin backed by gold and land mineral rights and assets and stuff like that. It's pretty damn crazy. And the thing with this is, is it's going to increase in value. It's a stable coin, but still increasing value. Supposedly, it's audited and stuff like that. Going to be burning some coins and you're going to have dividends eventually. I didn't know about this, right? But you guys in the comment section and in Discord told me, check this out because this YouTuber, that YouTuber, that YouTuber is talking about it. And man, when I checked it out, if what they're promising is true, this stuff looks amazing. But again, then comes that risk part where I, I, I didn't do my own due diligence properly. I didn't check everything out. And when you type this project in, everywhere it says scam, 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 scam. So, of course, I went to talk to the team and asked them, you know, what, what's going on? You know, why are you called a scam everywhere on the Internet? And they're like, well, if you check this project, that project, that project, they all have scam accusations, but just ask me a question and I'll, I'll debunk or whatever the English word for that is. So I went on ahead and, and asked him a couple of questions like, okay, what about this? What about that? And he kept on just bam with another fact, bam with another fact. And he kept debunking all these claims of scams. And now I'm kind of in a, in a corner where I like, I don't know what to do, right? Because I, I do kind of think all these YouTubers here, they've also, of course, done their own due diligence and looked into this project, which I'm doing right now. I told you guys before, I'm buying into it a little bit. For right now, I'm not going in too heavy. I'm just buying a couple of coins worth. Link down below. You can just check it out if you want to. 
Uh, but a lot of the guys in Discord are really, really heavy with this one, and a lot of people I've talked to are really, really excited. So I don't want to skip out, you know? And by the way, if you use the link, you get 5% extra coins. I thought I should also quickly mention that for not using the link or using the link, if you were going to buy. Uh, but again, I'll, I'll talk more about this as we move on, because um, if what they're saying is true, and that's a key, if what they're saying is true, this could be, this could be so, so, so extremely huge. Wow. That I, uh, I could almost not fathom how much money this could make. It, it, it's going to be insane. All right. So again, I'm going to have to verify, but, uh, I don't know what names exactly, but the run guys at least have talked about this before. And I, I don't have the names right in front of me guys, but, uh, you guys have been spamming me like crazy. So I had to check it out. It could have been that it's also only scammers in the comment section. No, it couldn't because you guys are also sitting it on Discord. But yeah, there's a ton of these YouTubers. Let me, I'm looking for a list right now. Just YouTubers I've seen talk about it. I, I wrote it down here somewhere, but I, I cannot find it for some unapparent reason. But yeah, guys, trust me when I say that everybody's been talking about this thing right now and everybody's putting in money. Do it yourself investing, run guys, Crypto Suzluk, Wolf of Dubai, and some others even. But you guys get the picture, right? A lot of these crypto YouTubers talking about this right now. And I'm, uh... I'm definitely checking it out. But uh, over, let's move on, though. Anthony Pompliano breaks down his 2021 Bitcoin outlook. And here you can see the title, which is kind of funny. Suddenly, I'm the most conservative guy around. And that's actually quite funny because I, it's going to be pretty aggressive. He says, I am pretty confident to Bitcoin hitting 100K at the end. And the fun thing is this used to be a really crazy price prediction. If you told people, yeah, it's going to hit 100K Bitcoin, they would look at you like you're a freaking moron. But right now, with the current climate and the things that have changed, people who say 100k Bitcoin and go or 100k Bitcoin next year, they're all called little worms. <laughs> and the same thing for XRP. If you're saying $1 XRP, you used to be called a lunatic, especially a couple of months ago when XRP was at 10 cents. Right now, if you're saying $1 XRP, I'm like, okay, yeah. So that, that can happen in like a you know a couple of days. So, so what then? I'm not looking at you like you're you're claiming something impossible or something crazy. It's just the next logical thing that's going to happen. And by the way, I'm not saying it's going to happen in a couple of days because I actually feel as if the price might go down a little bit more right now. Bitcoin could hit about 16.5k. XRP could be going down a little bit after Spark. Again, I, I, I was supposing it's going to do nothing, but there's a higher chance of going down rather than going up. So just so you know that. However, since we went down 5% today a little bit earlier, it could be that we're also going to be recovering from that. And of course, the basis of everything will be Bitcoin. But it's just something to keep in our heads, right? Keep it in our heads. And then Wills, as I said before, and literally everybody is buying XRP right now. The Spark airdrop is really around the corner. I think there's a couple more hours until it's there. So everybody's excited about it. Keep that in mind that uh, you know, if you're talking to an XRP holder right now, they are most likely partying somewhere because they're happy that Spark is going to be coming around and it's free money. All right. And, and a lot of people have said this Spark may actually get to, for example, a dollar or so eventually in time. Again, that's not my own analysis. I personally don't think it can ever do that, but all right. Well, I can't say never. All right. If XRP goes to, let's say, $65 ever in the future, then there's no chance or no reason why Spark couldn't ever get to a dollar. I'm just thinking Spark will never get better than XRP. But theoretically speaking, it can get high into those market caps. It can make us a lot of money. And yeah, it's also going to depend on how many exchanges will support it, but we'll hear more about that very, very soon. Guys, that was it for today's video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. I think we covered everyone here. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Flair just posted a new video about all their guides and everything together here, kind of summarizing everything. And once more, if you're new or if you don't know too much about Spark or Flair, check out the white paper and understand how it works before talking to me about it. All right. I've already dared you guys to just tag all your people who know about Flair, who claim to know how Flair works. Because I bet you 95% of them don't know how it operates. I, I, I've already put that bet up on Twitter. And if you guys are not agreeing with me, all right, just check out the Twitter and uh, check out these tweets that I've been posting. Because here, for example, uh, no, not that one. This one, right? Okay, it's very far, far down. What the frick? Uh, uh, um, no, it's not there. It's, it's up here. I, I thought I just tweeted it out. Here. I, I bet 99% of the people that are talking about it right now have no idea. And if you think they do, comment it, all right? I believe that 95% of them have never checked out how Flare works. And I want you guys to disprove me on this one. Who knows? Who do you think really knows about Flair? Put it in the comments section down below. And I'm going to check to them. I'm going to chat with them and see what they know. Because I'm kind of done with all this BS, all right? Just let me know. And I'll see you guys again in another one.